This is the Game Changers Experience. Deep dive conversations with leading business disruptors, Olympic athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and influencers from around the world. This show will teach you insights about the winning principles in mindset, productivity, marketing, branding, entrepreneurship, business strategy, and more. Hosted by Productivity Authority, business strategist, former elite athlete, author, and public speaker, Adam Strong. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Game Changers Experience with myself, Adam Strong. And today, we have another great show lined up for you. Um, today, we're actually going to be talking a little bit about podcasting right so one of my favorite subjects and as you guys know we're on i think it's like 145 150 episodes or thereabouts depending on when you're listening to this of course but i've got a, a good friend of mine based over in the u.s called colin mitchell colin specializes in growing and monetizing podcasts more specifically uh, he's the podcast host of his own podcast called sales transformation and he's also the founder of sales cast as well so uh without further ado colin welcome to the show Hey, Adam, thanks for having me on. I'm going to try to do my best to bring my energy level up to yours. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what this show is all about. Listen, I, 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 um, I'm grateful that you're on here and I'm excited where these conversations are going because, you know, it was interesting as uh, I was doing some prep for, for this and stuff like that. And, you know, when we came across each other and stepped across each other and when you reached out to me, I was like, mm, that's interesting. Like Colleen's got a really interesting background. And what was really fascinating that really attracted to me to your profile was that your background from when you had a, um, your, your, child, your childhood, you know, when you were mm -hmm. growing up and stuff, we have a similar childhood, but can you just tell us a little bit more about how you got into the world of, well, sales and podcasting, if you wouldn't mind, give us a, a backstory. Yeah, I'll, I'll take you back a, a little bit further um, and I'll keep it brief so that we can get to the much more interesting stuff. Um, yeah. So I was, you know, you alluded to, I was, I was, I had a rough childhood. I grew, I was grew up, uh, raised by a single mom, um, with three other brothers and, you know, she waited tables and worked at night and, uh, did the best she could. And sometimes we came up short. So, you know, we, you know, used food stamps to pay for our groceries and we were, you know, grew up on government cheese and, you know, got, you know, uh, evicted from places when we came up short and paid, couldn't pay the rent and occasionally had to live in a motel and, you know, not quite homeless, but like really, really close sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and I was left to my own devices and, you know, I was a bit of a, a lost troubled kid early on. And so I didn't have a lot of positive, you know, male role models in my life. Nobody was telling me school was important. Um, I frankly didn't enjoy school. I was a horrible student. So I, you know, got through high school by the skin of my teeth, didn't go to college because nobody really was telling me that I needed to. Um, and from there, you know, there wasn't a lot of opportunity <laughs> for somebody like me. There wasn't a lot of doors that were open. Typically when people get into sales, right? I think we're on, I don't know, almost 300 episodes. So I've, I've interviewed a lot of people. Right. Um, and typically your sales story is, Hey, I went to school for this thing and it didn't work out. So I got a sales job or I thought I was going to enjoy this thing and I didn't. So I got a sales job or, you know, Hey, the economy was bad. It was the only job that I could get. And that's a <laughs> typical story. A lot of times, you know, nobody goes to college for sales. Nobody uh, grows up as a kid dressing up as a salesman. Um, it just doesn't happen. And so it's typically people's fallback plan or their plan B. And for me, it was the only opportunity that I had. Um, it was the only door that was open. And I literally had to beg and plead to even get that opportunity. So when I did, I made the best of it. Sounds I worked great. my way up to the top uh, very quickly. I was the first one in the office every day, last one to leave every day, came in on the weekend to get my list ready, uh, to send out proposals, do things that I didn't want to do during the work week um, and worked my way up to the top pretty quickly. Love it. Love it. Do you know what that, you know, that story reminds me of, uh, of that movie, the pursuit of happiness. Yeah. I'm sure you've read, uh, seen that by Will Smith, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, this. everybody's talking about Will Smith right now. Maybe. <laughs> maybe for the wrong reasons. I don't know. Or maybe, or maybe the Oscars or was just kind of fixed that I, I I'm sure that was fixed. Yeah. But you know, that was everybody. Just kind of yeah. I think everybody's not, everybody's unsure. They're like, was yeah. it real? Was it not? You know, if they wanted everybody to be talking about the Oscars, they accomplished that. So hundred percent, hundred percent. It's kind of annoying, but Hey ho, it's all good. Uh, listen, that's a great story. I love that. Um, 
I, so let's get into the meat and the bones of, of today's conversation, which is all around podcasting. Um, something that I'm super passionate about, something that you're super passionate about because, you know, having almost 300 episodes, uh, cutest to you. Um, but let's talk a little bit about um, podcasting and, and, and kind of like why you believe that, number one, let's, let's talk about why you believe podcasting is such a powerful tool to grow a business. Mm. Let's talk about that first. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for a lot of reasons, and I'll sort of preface it with this. I believe, um, and I'll be interested to get your thoughts on this, but I believe that in the next five to 10 years, if you have a company or brand, you know, company in, in your brand for your company mm -hmm. does not have a podcast in the next five to 10 years, that would be the equivalent of today, not having a website. Hmm. What are your thoughts? Well, that's, I know it might be a yeah. bit of a stretch, but just think about it. Think yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of dwelling on it. You, you know, it's interesting because then I kind of think of, you know, there are some industries out there that still don't have a website, for example, because you know, <laughs> word of mouth marketing works for them. Yeah, let's not count on them having a podcast then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. My thought pattern. But uh, it, it, now, yeah, way. there's going to be some exceptions <laughs> to the rule. There's, there's going to be some exceptions to the rule. Absolutely. Yeah. But I would say just generally speaking, you know, it, say five, 10 years ago, if you're in B2B and you didn't have, you know, you didn't have a LinkedIn profile, not a big deal today. If you're in B2B, you don't have a LinkedIn profile. People are wondering like, are you even real? <laughs> well, that, that's true. Actually. That's very true. That's very true. Um, I love that. That's a good thought process. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. It might be a bit of a stretch, but that's what I believe. I stand, I stand behind it. And, and then here, I'll give you some reasons why. Right. So, um, Number one, it's it's an opportunity for you, and you can use a podcast a lot of different ways. You can use a podcast for top of funnel activities, to build relationships, to open doors. It's really, really difficult to get the attention of people in the B2B space because they're getting so many spam messages. They're getting so many robotic LinkedIn DMs. They're getting so much junk that they never asked for. Everybody's trying to get their attention and it's harder. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that podcasting would solve all of your prospecting, you know, problems and fill all your pipeline as much as, you know, more than you can handle. But if you used it as a vehicle to get access to people that are harder to get access to otherwise, a lot of sales is building relationships, depending on what you do, unless it's a highly transactional product, um, then, you know, there's some exceptions there, but, uh, and it's the greatest way to build a relationship. You ask people on, you lift them up. You're curious, you ask them questions, you connect, you build rapport, you collaborate, you create content. Like, I don't know anything else that's a better way to build relationships and add value with somebody that you, you know, ideally they could drive revenue for your business. So that's one way that you could view using a podcast. Um, but also just amplifying your own voice, having your own stage, building your own audience. The biggest reason that people, that brands are throwing money at podcasting right now today is because they understand that the podcast listener is <clears throat> much more likely to take action on any sort of offer that gets in front of them because there's a lot of trust that's built up. People are choosing to plug you, Adam, into their ears every single week as part of their routine when they're walking their dog or on their treadmill or driving to the office there's a lot of trust that gets built over time and there's no other medium that you can, you know, replicate this. It's harder on social cause you got to pay to play. Um, and if you're doing organic, you know, it's like, you know, 3% of the people you're connected with, they're seeing your content on a regular basis and you've competing with algorithms and all kinds of things. Right. So the podcast is where you can really own an audience and, you know, if you're constantly educating them, providing value, building, there's a lot of trust that's established and, and companies, you know, really do uh, understand that. You know, I can really empathize um, what you're saying, because I remember about, this was probably going back about eight years ago. So before, enter, before I got into the world of podcasting and what I do today, yeah. I was in the world of corporate well-being. And so B2B space, trying to get access to HR directors, which are really extremely difficult. And what you mentioned just a second ago, these people are busy, right? 
And yeah. like, no one wants to be DM'd on LinkedIn consistently. They're like, you're just pissing people off. <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? But what you're saying is you can use podcasts as a, what I call a, what would you say would be kind of a value driven lead magnet? What, what would you call it? Yeah. I mean, it, if we want to call it exactly what it is, podcast prospecting, like you're building relationships with your ideal prospects. Now you can't do it with everybody, but let's say your business and, you know, you have some, you know, highly targeted accounts, like accounts that are like game changers for your business. Right? <laughs> These are the ones that you would invite people to have on your show and build a relationship with them by adding value from day one, lifting them up, giving them a piece of content that they can share across social that, you know, makes them look good and feel good. I mean, there's tons and tons of value there. I mean, and, 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 you know, here's a stat for you is podcast listeners are four times more likely to take action on an offer that's in put in front of them than somebody like reading a blog or clicking on an ad. And, and that's why, you know, 2021, there's like 1.3 billion, uh, you know, roughly spent on uh, advertising on podcasts. And by 2025, it's going to exceed 2.7 billion. So it's growing at a very, very fast pace. I didn't realize those, 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 those stats were so big. I really didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, isn't it, isn't it like the, um, and, and I think if I, if I'm not mistaken, maybe you can correct me, but how many podcasts are there? I thought there were around 2.8 million in the world. Is that correct? Yeah, so there is about 2.8 million published podcasts, but only about 50% of them still release episodes today. Right, right. Um, and that's yeah. mainly because they don't have a strategy or they're only thinking of it from one lens, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's say, okay, maybe podcast prospecting, you know, uh, is not, maybe podcast prospecting is not a ideal fit for you. Well, there's other ways that podcasting works. So if you have people that have already engaged with you somehow, maybe they've filled out a form on your website, maybe they have um, attended an event, right? But they're not, you know, maybe they're, they're not quite sales qualified. Well, you know, if you're serving them educational content via your podcast, that is a way to build a ton of trust rather than just some long, boring nurture email <laughs> sequence. So there is people that are using their podcast as more top of funnel. There's people that are using it more mid funnel. There's companies that I've even talked to that are using their podcast where, you know, there's deals that are, they're already engaged with and they've kind of gone a little bit cold and they use the podcast. Hey, come on the show as a way to move those deals forward and really just strengthen the relationship. I like that. That's interesting. I never knew about that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And yeah. interesting, interesting enough, I, I want to go back to what you said, which was around why 50% of all podcasts are, are kind of what I call active and the other 50% are inactive. Why do you think that some of the reasons why, why is it that there is only a small minority of people like you, like me, that have yeah. successful podcasts where the rest maybe maybe they're expect they had a different expectation what's the real reason between what's the big differences between the successful podcast and the non-successful podcast yeah i mean well the one one thing is it's the same reason why you know the gyms are packed in january and then by february march you know it's back to normal and you know <laughs> half is full right That's so, so we're dealing with we're dealing with human beings right so i mean some people are just going to give up before it gets good and the interesting thing about podcasts is people think like oh man it's too late nobody's going to listen to me they have all these reasons of why not to get started but podcasting is at the perfect place right now if think about youtube 10 12 years ago if you started a youtube channel to you know grow your business or your brand or both and you started 10 or 12 years ago and you stuck with it, you got a great business, right? Or you're crushing it on YouTube and just making a ton through advertising or both, or right. both in a lot of cases. Um, that's where podcasting is today. So that's where podcasting is today. It's way less competitive than YouTube. Um, and you can outlast your competition in your niche. And you and there's some niches that are really just getting started, like you know, um, where there's not a lot of options. And depending on what it is that you do, you can own that space if you stick with it. It's not going to happen overnight. The reason a lot of podcasts fail is because they really think of it as a, oh, we're going to create content that educates our buyers. 
And then they're going to reach out to us and want to do business with us. And that's the only thing that they're thinking. They're thinking it to, they're thinking of it as the same lens of I'm going to write blogs and then we're going to have more leads than we can handle. And well, there's a lot more to it, right? There's SEO and there's keywords and there's consistency and there's the right topics and there's the marketing behind it and links. And I mean, just writing blogs, like, you know, you're going to go broke. Um, so <laughs> There's just a lot, there's a lot more to your podcast. Like your name matters significantly. So many people think I'm going to come up with a clever name or I'm going to come up with a name that sounds cool, or I'm going to come up with a name that's a play on words, whatever. Like, these are all the crazy things that people do and they're not bad ideas. Right. They just don't help you get found on the podcast platforms. <laughs> it's hurting you significantly. So you got it. When you pick your podcast name, you got to think about what are who are the people that I want to listen to my show? Mm. And when they hit that podcast platform and they're searching for something new, what are they searching? And that needs to be part of the formula of your podcast name. Mm. And then there's all these other places of real estate, like your podcast description. So many times people just say, this is the, you know, X, Y, Z podcast with Adam strong. And that's the description. And it's like, that is a huge missed opportunity because you can put lots of keywords in there that are going to help you get found on the podcast platforms. And then you often see where people just say in the uh, episode names, you know, episode 52 and that's it. Right? <laughs> uh, or, you know, episode 52 with Colin Mitchell, like I, that doesn't look interesting to me. Right. So you got to have titles that are going to attract people to listen and you can also leverage keywords there. Um, and then don't even get me started on show notes. I mean, people get so lazy <laughs> with show notes because it's hard. It's a lot to do. And people just don't know. They don't think that show notes are important, but they're extremely important. So there's all these little details that really matter if you want to have a successful podcast. And what I mean by a successful podcast is a podcast that's driving revenue for you and or your business. I love it. Very cool. Some very good, some, some, some great food for thought guys. So I hope you are really taking notes and you got your notebooks and pens handy because I'm telling you now, some of the, I've got my notebook here in front of me and I'm making notes as, as, as we're having conversations. So this is, these are like, these are like value bombs, uh, golden gems, whatever you want to call it. Right. Now um, I was going to say to you uh, around, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, monetization because we kind of mm -hmm. touched a little bit about it and i know that you do it in your podcast and and let's talk a little bit about that because i'm fascinated to learn more about the whole kind of like monetization of podcasting in particular because i you know i know that some people feel like oh you know it's just a podcast i just want to kind of get my message out there and <laughs> interview people and what you're not you know what i'm saying right you you yeah. it's interesting how different people have different reasons for starting up a podcast but actually yeah. you can make some serious amounts of revenue i mean my good friend john yeah. lee domus is, uh, has has done a great job i think he makes an insane amount of money it's like 1.3 million dollars a year or something like that it yeah i think and i think it's like roughly 2 to 300 a uh, thousand a month yeah, exactly. So it's like an insane amount of uh, amount of revenue and stuff. But let's talk about that because because you've made some real uh, interesting discoveries around the monetization and and but how do you go about monetizing your podcast if you're thinking about doing it? Is it that you need to go out and go hunt uh, uh, companies and say, hey, I've got a podcast. You want to come and advertise it? It's going to cost you five hundred bucks for thirty seconds. I mean, what's the yeah. what sort of approach do you, would you use and 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 what's kind of the benefits? Let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of different ways to monetize your show. Um, and you know, people often want to monetize a little bit too early, right? But if you haven't built up, if you haven't provided enough value or built enough trust and rapport with your listeners, mm -hmm. they're not really going to tolerate you promoting, you know, stuff all the time. Right? right. And also be very selective. Okay. So let's talk about that. First, let's talk about what are the different ways you can monetize your show and then we can dig let's into whatever that. ones maybe think are more beneficial, but okay. So running ads, pretty straightforward, right? You can get sponsors for your show. Um, you can do affiliate marketing. Okay. Yep. Which is a comfortable place for a lot of people to get started if their show isn't quite um, you know, at a place where they can start collecting ad dollars through sponsors. Right. Um, you can, you can also monetize your th show through people paying to come on your show. 
Okay. It's another, that's another one. Um, you can also build like community or uh, Patreon or even paid subscription podcast. Okay. Yeah. That's one. Um, not a good fit for everybody. Um, you can also promote your own stuff. So maybe you have a book, maybe you have digital products, maybe you have courses, maybe you have a masterclass, whatever it is, you can specifically use it to promote your own stuff. Um, and then there's, and then there's kind of, uh, the last one, which we covered a little bit, right. Is you can use it to align with your business, right? Who do you want to build relationships with clients, partners, affiliates, you name it, you leverage the podcast to build relationships with those people. Um, and you can track revenue through there, whether you use it top of funnel, mid, of fu mid funnel, or to, you know, drive people to close, um, there's all different ways of how you could use the podcast to drive revenue for your business. Or even if you don't have a business, this works. We, we have clients that are enterprise, you know, sales reps and they use, they pay for their podcast out of their own pocket because it helps them close big deals. Um, so it works in a lot of different ways. You just got to kind of pick a strategy and own that strategy and like master it. Mm, interesting. And you don't have to pick one or the other too. Like, it's not like you can't, if, if I'm using it to land clients, I can't get sponsors. Like you can definitely do it. I have three revenue streams for my show specifically okay. that I leverage every month. Mm, interesting. Cause I, I was going to ask you, cause you said at the very beginning, you have to understand, um, like you, you can't sell or you can't monetize it too early, but then what determines on what's too early and what's not too early? Is it the amount of downloads you're getting per monthly? Is it the, I don't know, the countries that you're getting them from? What, what determines that? Yeah, there's not a perfect answer, right? But if you, if your download, if your downloads and your new unique listeners are increasing, right? Um, that's a pretty good sign that people are enjoying the content, uh, that you're providing value um, and that they're sticking around. So I would say the one thing that you want to focus on is audience retention. Like audience retention. are people listening to it once or twice and then never again? Right. Um, or are they subscribing and then listening to every episode that you drop? Got it. That's interesting. You know, and you can also test different, you can test different content, right. To see what people enjoy. Like, you know, you could see, well, you know, Hey, call the episode with Colin was a bit of a dud. Nobody downloaded that. We're not going to have people like Colin on again. Right. So just to give you an example, right. So you can test and see what types of people do, do my, does my audience prefer or type of topics or types of conversations. Um, I'm also a big fan of doing a mix of solo in, um, episodes and guest interviews. Yeah. Guest interviews help get new listeners. Um, and you know, the, um, Solo episodes really help with audience um, retention because, um, you know, a lot of times when you're interviewing somebody, um, that that guest is a little bit of, you know, more of the focus, obviously, of the conversation. Um, but doing those solo episodes allows your listeners to get to know you a little bit more, to, you know, connect with you on a deeper, you know, level, to, um, you know, learn, learn more directly from you and your thoughts and things that you want to share. Interesting. Uh, so, um, okay. So I've got, a, I got, I want to ask you a personal question here because when we first launched the podcast, which was uh, just under two years ago, it was like June, 2020, right? Mm -hmm. Pandemic side. So we yeah. launched it back then we started off with once a week. Right. And then I think it was like maybe four months later, I increased it to twice a week. So we did a solo episode and then we did one interview. Right. Okay. So Tuesday, Thursday release date. And then I thought, okay, so so this was, you know, and then we kind of like uh, the download numbers kind of they plateaued for a while. And I just thought, you know what? I, I then I got like we got like super busy in the business, right? And I just thought, you know what? I have to cut back, keep with the interviews, and scrap the solo stuff. And then we kind of like pretty much maintained the download numbers, right? Mm -hmm. and there was maybe a, a drop by maybe maybe 10%, not, not a huge amount, but, and then what's been really interesting here, Colin, is over the last six months, we've seen an increase of around 35% growth. Last month, this month just gone, we saw an increase of 60% growth. That's insane. And I'm just thinking mm -hmm. to myself, now, do I go back to the solo episodes now? <laughs> Cause it's like, well, something must be working here. So it's kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of like playing around with this, but I don't know. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, 
if, if, if something is working, I wouldn't suggest, you know, changing too much. Um, but what we're seeing is, so we have over 75 shows that we manage and that's a cumulative only a, almost a million downloads per month. Down. And so we do geek out at the data fairly often. Um, and what we're seeing on a lot of the podcast platforms, like, so your host data is good, like your podcast host, right? So those who are like, what the heck is a host? Well, it's kind of like you host your website. Well, you need somewhere to host your podcast, right? right so pe right. some people use anchor because it's free. Um, <laughs> we use Simplecast um, because it has great features and good reporting and all that. But your, your podcast host has like data that you get on the back end of, you know, how many downloads and listens per episode, and unique yep. listeners. Uh, and that data is okay. Um, but you can get better data um, if you log directly into Apple Connect or you log directly into Spotify and you can see a little bit more of what's going on. Um, you can see things like uh, completion of episodes, right? So, um, you know, did people listen to the whole episode or did they only listen to you know half of it, right? Um, and what we're seeing a trend across all shows is with guest interviews, even at like 20, 30 minutes, the average is about 65% completion. Um, and with solo episodes that are like sub 10 minutes, we're seeing like 91 plus percent. Wow. And when I say plus, when I say plus, what, what we're seeing too, which is really interesting. So they're consuming a majority of that episode, right? And, and this is, this is common because it happens. Um, you know, people listen to it, they get busy, something else happens, whatever. Um, but with these solo episodes, what's really interesting is like, if it's under 10 minutes, a lot of cases, people are listening to it and then they're going back and listening to it a second time. Got it. Got it. And that's, what's really interesting. Actually, I've got a good friend of mine. He's got a very successful podcast. He is a, he's a, his, niche if you like he's he's a hypnotherapist so that's his niche that's what he does and um so he's been doing things i'd imagine like those people are dropping off as soon as they're <laughs> like 20 percent like completion there you go exactly <laughs> or 100 percent because it's still playing and they're just you know they're out of it <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the bush um yeah I love maybe it. that's the trick maybe that is the your trick. listeners Hypnotize your and listeners. then you get a hundred percent completion on <laughs> all episodes and the pod, the po here's the thing. Why is this important? Well, the podcast platforms like this, right? This is yeah. going to tell people they're going to, this is going to tell them like, are people enjoying this content or not? Right. It, but it's true. I mean, like he was saying to me, like, even though you, uh, do you know, what? maybe we should do that. I don't know. Maybe we should like try to hypnotize our audience, whatever it is. Imagine that you're looking at a grand, uh, a, 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 a ticking, uh, yeah. whatever. Anyway, anyways, we should so get him to do a, we could get your friend to do like a, um, we can just put a mid roll ad of him hypnotizing listeners. <laughs> It. You know, that's so podcast funny. will blow up <laughs> brainwash and hypnotize people we'll get so many download numbers but he's um and we're just joking we're joking we're yeah joking. we are joking by the way uh but it's always kind of fun <laughs> anyway <laughs> but his um his download numbers i think it was on in the region of around a uh, 150 thousand a month yeah that, that is great. like that is a that is a serious amount of downloads i mean i, I think uh last year i think he hit um there was one month that he hit 165 or 180 so because people are just like re-listening to it over and over and over and over again so you kind of like hit the nail on the head with that yeah i would imagine you know there's probably you know i don't know enough about that niche but i would imagine there's not a lot of podcasts no. you know in that space no. so he's probably just owning that domain right so that's something you can think about like look for an under see here's an interesting fact um we talked about it earlier. There's like 2.8 million podcasts today, right? Only 50% are still releasing episodes, but here's the interesting thing is the top 10% of shows are getting 90% of the total listenership. And so why that's important is there's more, um, demand than there is inventory of good quality shows. So you can be specific and try to look for like, what's an undercovered niche or topic. And then you could really easily own that space by just being consistent, um, and sticking with it. Love it. It's an interesting question, only because I've got a good, a good client of mine and he releases seasons. Now, what's your take on this whole kind of like season one, season two, but then you kind of get like these breaks and whatever it is. Are there any pros and cons yeah. around this? I mean, what's your take on it? So there is people who do like really high produced, you know, drops where they might do like seven to 12 episodes. And, you know, you see a lot of this in like true crime or like, 
you know, uh, more entertainment driven type shows, yeah. um, or, you know, um, you know, things like that. Got it. Um, and so, and, and usually when they do a drop like that, if the podcast, you know, hits the charts or it does well, um, there's a lot of marketing dollars behind, you know, those podcasts, you know, they're running paid ads on the podcast platforms, on distribution networks, on, um, you know, social, like you name it, there's typically a lot of money going behind, you know, making those drops successful. Um, and, but if you're just like, you know, normal, you know, if you, normal business or B2B type show, um, doing seasons, <clears throat> there's a benefit to doing a season, right? So like maybe you change the direction of your show a little bit so you can have a reason for a new season um, is a good way to think about it. Um, but I don't recommend taking a pause or a break. And you're like, well, you know, what about vacation? Well, you know, you can schedule them out, right? Because the challenge is, is if people are subscribed to your show, after two weeks of not releasing an episode, it stops automatically downloading and giving me a push notification to my device ah. saying there's a new Game Changers Experience podcast episode for you to check out. And then the only way that I'm going to start getting those again is if I go in and go to it and you know re basically resubscribe. So um, yeah, the 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 episodes stop auto downloading on devices if you take a break for more than two weeks. Ah, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. So now you know the real reasons why you shouldn't break in your podcast if you do have a podcast, yeah. that is. So, um, yeah, and you can just do like short solo episodes or you could record four or five and schedule them out. Like, you know, even if you just hop on and say, I'm taking a break this week, guys, taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, whatever you got to do, just keep it going. Absolutely. 100%. Um, okay. So, Here's an interesting part, because obviously there's a lot of people out there that don't have podcasts, but they might be thinking about podcasting, but they probably have, like you had mentioned, like, I don't know, whether it be uh, procrastination, whether it be around judgments, mindset, whatever it might be, but they think it's a great idea. What is it, is there any advice that you'd have for people that are looking to get into podcasting? What is it that you, what would be the beginning steps for them? Any thoughts there? Yeah. Um, think about your name and just get started. Um, don't think about it too long. Um, biggest reason people don't do it is like, ah, nobody's going to listen and I'm going to suck at it. And yeah, let's be real. At first you're going to suck at it and nobody's going to listen. Um, but if you stick with it, that'll change. You will get better. You'll build up listenership. You'll learn some things. Um, we have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of resources for people that are just trying to get started. Um, we have a free podcast community. We do pr almost almost weekly events on different, you know, uh, topics today we're doing on how to grow your podcast audience. Um, the next week, um, I think we're doing, you know, how to get yourself booked on three plus podcasts a week. Um, you know, how to start a revenue generating podcast. Like we do tons and tons of events. And then we have a free podcast for community for folks that are looking to get started, um, or, you know, have started and trying to grow and monetize. Love it. Love it. Love it. Now, um, for those, um, I'm going to say those souls that have a podcast, but they're kind of thinking about quitting, right? For whatever reason that they decide to, and, and you know, it's a real, it's really sad to see only 50% of, uh, of podcasts that are only around today because they've just dropped off. But any advice for those people? Yeah, it's, it's hanging there. Like a lot of times podcast growth is not, you know, straight up. Um, a lot of times what we see is like, okay, you know, Hey, you tell all your friends and you're really excited and you're putting, you know, your, your blood, sweat and tears into making it be successful. So you get a little, you know, stint of growth early on. And then typically it kind of goes flat for a while that could last for a month, two months, three months, you name it. And then eventually then it starts climbing again. Um, and then you have growth that you just can't explain in a lot of cases. Um, maybe you have a great guest or, you know, maybe, um, you start to guest on more shows and promote your show. Like there's a lot of ways to grow your show without having to spend a lot of money. Um, but you just got to hang in there. You know, we have over 75 shows in our network and, you know, we see it all of the time, you know, this big burst of growth and then a bit of a flat line. And then it starts to grow steadily after that. And so a lot of people give up during that flat period. And that flat period could be a month, it could be two months, it could be six months. It just depends on you, your niche, your content, how frequently you're doing it. There's a lot of variables um, that determine that, uh, but that's where most people give up. 
Love it, love it, love it. Now, I, I know that we're coming towards the end of our conversation, um, but I suppose final final question really is about growing audience numbers because I know that the, that that's going to be a really in, in fact, yeah, audience numbers because I think that's <clears> going to be that's going to really kind of give people the motivation and the drive to continue to keep going. Right? Any? I know that we've had a we've had you've had a you've shared a sort of a, a few golden nuggets around sort of growing your audience and stuff but are there any any other sort of uh sort of aha moments that you believe would be kind of a game changer yeah. for, for the audience yeah i mean we could do a whole episode on audience growth i mean we're doing an hour webinar on it today so damn um, but i'll get but i'll give you a couple of nuggets um there you know out of all the options of growing your audience i would say focus on two two at first. Okay. Um, and, and, and the one being be strategic about your guests. Okay. Mm -hmm. So people that, you know, have a good following that you can tap into. Um, now only a certain percentage of people on social media are podcast listeners, but it's going to help, right? So if you get, you know, pe specific people on your show, they share that content, you're going to get net new subscribers. Um, and, and then the other thing is just guest on other shows, guest on other shows a lot because there is absolutely nothing that converts better than you guesting on a show and then the people that listen to that show then becoming your listeners of your show right. so that is the number one thing that will convert better than anything else because you're already meeting them on the podcast platform and it's frictionless for them to then go check out your show yeah, that's really interesting. It's like kind of a, as we would call it in the podcasting world, like a co-collab type of, you know, like, yeah. a, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you can do podcast swaps with other people and then you can even do promotion swaps, which are very, very, very successful too for growing your show. So if you, you know, uh, connect with another podcaster and you both have a sales show, you know, you could promote their show on yours for two, three weeks, or even a month, and they do the same for you. And then you're basically cross promoting each other and helping each other grow. That sounds like an excellent idea, you know, and, you know, I, I always, um, I always talk about the importance of collaboration and these guys know more than anybody else in the world that collaboration is the way and key to growth. So yeah, there you go. And Colin's even said it to you guys. So there you go. Hopefully. Well, so it's all good. Listen, I just want to say, um, Collins, thank you so much for being on the show today. We really appreciate you sharing your golden nuggets and guys, I hope that you've enjoyed today's show because I've written down a ton of notes. And, uh, even if you, uh, haven't got a podcast, even if you have got a podcast, right, this, particular episode i think you would really absolutely 100 enjoy so again colin just want to say thanks very much for being on the show today yeah thank you for having me appreciate it oh uh, now one more thing before you kind of uh bounce off on whatever it is what is it that you're working on because i'd love to I, i'd love to ask that question because you know we have listeners from all over the world um you know we have a big audience over in the united states believe it or not there are biggest fans right. The, the fellow Yanks, right. uh, they, they must love uh, our British accents and whatever <laughs> it might be. But uh, yeah, love to know what you're working on right now. Yeah, I mean, really uh, just trying to help as many podcasters as possible. The podcast community is a, is a big focus for us. Um, you know, me and my co-founder, Chris, you know, when we realized that half podcasts fail and through talking to over 1500 people last year that were getting started in their podcast or had started already at some point and realizing that, you know, not everybody was a good fit for us necessarily. Um, but, but there were still a lot of people that we could help and, you know, letting them pick our brain for 45 minutes was, wasn't quite enough. Um, and that's really the reason for the, you know, for the community is we want to put a dent into that 50% that are failing, that are starting, um, and provide them all the tools, knowledge, resources, access to content, things that they need to know, things that we're using and, you know, helping our clients to grow their shows um, and giving them access to that. So that's a, that's a big focus of ours. Like I said, we do weekly webinars, events, content, resources, tools, um, and you can also network with hundreds of podcasters as well. Love it. And for you guys that want to connect with Colin, you can uh, connect with him on the links below. Just click on the uh, link, links below and you can see all that in the, in the show notes. And again, if you do reach out to him, just mention the Game Changers experience because then he can kind of put two and two together. And I'm sure that he'd be more than happy or one of his team members would be more than happy to engage in the conversation. So, so again, Colin, thanks very much and uh, appreciate you, buddy. And uh, hopefully see you again soon. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. 
Hey guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to today's episode on the Game Changers experience. I would be gratefully appreciated if you could leave a good or a bad review. It doesn't matter, one or a five star review, whichever you prefer, on any of the platforms, whether it be on Apple, whether it be on Spotify, Podchaser, etc. And please leave a testimonial or review about our podcast. And if you have enjoyed our podcast, then I look forward to seeing you on the next Game Changers experience. Take care, see you soon, et cetera. And please leave a testimonial or review about our podcast. And if you have enjoyed our podcast, then I look forward to seeing you on the next Game Changers experience. Take care, see you soon.